we had the Waccamaw Family Caregiver Program. They assist us in funds to get <coughs> handicap wraps and remodeling bathroom minor, ba minor um, repairs. We had the Sisters of Charity Program where we train young people to do carpentry, masonry, electricity. Um, they train under a licensed contractor. <coughs> they repaired six homes. We partner with the Alcohol and Drug and DSS. The student went out and remodeled house in that program. We had a computer pilot program where people could go to Waynesburg Tech, Bethesda United Methodist Church, Friendship United Methodist Church, and take computer classes. We partnered with the Coswell Foundation. We host a week of youth camp for over 150 youth at the King Street Recreation. We have a single family housing program. As those of you who have come to the office I see a subdivision behind our office. We have nine houses. We receive funds for down payment and to purchase the lot. We still have lots for sale. The funding is the USDA program. We still have some lot for sale again. Now let's try and explain the home program. Mobile homes. We do assist in the mo we do assist mobile homes, but the mobile home has to be 30 years old. It has to be a 1989 to qualify from the purchase date. So if you purchase a mobile <coughs> home January, February, March, it wouldn't qualify. It has to be April and so forth. You could get up to $8,000 <coughs> to repair that mobile home. But we can only request for one item to be fixed. When the state inspector comes out, he will see that if you need more, then he would direct us as to what we need to add. We do heat and air, ramp, doors and windows, handicapped bathroom, damaged floor, electrical, and plumbing. Okay, for a brick house, wood, a block. In the emergency program, you can get up to $8,000 also. We do handicap ramp, bathroom, floors, replacement entrance door, plumbing. We also have a major rehab program where you can get up to $25,000. Now in that program, there is a restricted covenant that's gonna be placed against your property. And it's gonna say that as long as you're in the house, family members is in the house, then it's grant monies. But if you, do, if you decide to sell it to someone other than a family member, then it becomes a loan. So when the lawyer who does your work, the closing, he would see that you receive some money from the state and a little portion of it would be um, sent back to the state because it depreciate by uh, $1,250 a year. Your house cannot exceed $133,000 fair market value. So if your house is worth more than 133000 we won't be able to assist you. 
We do have income guideline. Those of you who have flyers, you will see the information enclosed as to what needed to get um, a file started. But the four things that really qualify a person to participate in the program is you must own your house and the lot. Sometimes we have a mobile home in our name, but the lot is in somebody else's name. We won't be able to assist. But if you have the mobile home in your name, the lot, and the lot is in your name along with the family member, we can assist. Same thing with the house. You must be living in the house for two years. You must meet the income guideline. And again, your house cannot exceed 133,000 fair market value. That's our program. You have any questions? Yes. So if you've got a lot, do y'all build houses? No, ma'am. We have lots, but the USDA is the funding source for the, for the lots to build the houses. And if the lots can be anywhere in the county? USDA, we get to that part. I'm just talking about our part. Oh. And behind our office, we have about um, six lots with water and sewer, and we have about 10 without water and sewer. Fifteen houses a year. Right now, from January to now, are already taken in nineteen application. So, so we need to recruit contractors. It has to be a licensed contractor. I mean, I, I have a lot of contractor that comes to me, but it's like a six-week process in them getting their monies, and a lot of them can't um, uh, wait until to get their monies. Thirty years or newer, mm -hmm. she can help you. 
Right. Older than 30 years, she can't help you. Okay. Okay. In 1988, I cannot help you. And if you purchase it in January of 2019, January, February, and March, I still can't help you because it has to be from the purchase date. So if you purchase, if you purchase in January now, so anything purchased in March would be too old. Yes. But April 89, newer, can be assisted. USDA, they have uh, a program. Then I guess she'll speak about, about that when she gets up. Right. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. So if you're living in a home that has been purchased, I'll say in the 60s or 70s, that house does not qualify? Does it qualify? Yes, ma'am. The deed is in your name. House, not the house. house. Mobile home? House. 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 Uh -huh. If the deed is in your name, you qualify. Mm -hmm. But you qualify through ownership and income. House value. Excuse me, this program has nothing to do with the disaster. Is it no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. That's why I'm getting flooded now because disaster is closed and everybody is coming to Rome. Greensburg Enterprise. Looking for assistance. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Please forgive me. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Singleton, and I am the media marketing specialist here at the county. And I just thought it would be a good time, since churches now have moved for the, to the internet, if any of you have an email address for your church, I would r really like for you to pass that information on to me, because I could get you information like this quicker. The thought just came to me, so if you're not prepared to do it tonight, I understand. But please, if you're ever visiting the building or you want to call, make sure that I get your church's email so that I can uh, inform your churches of things of this nature. Thank you very much, and I do apologize. Good evening to those that I have not spoken to. Can everyone hear me? Okay, I like to walk around. I don't like to sit in one, stand in one space. Um, I'm Shamise Boyd, um, loan specialist with USDA Rural Development. How many of you have heard of USDA Rural Development prior to receiving notice about this event? How many of you have actually applied with USDA Rural Development? Okay. So as far as USDA Rural Development, fiscal year 2018, we actually across the state spent $1,095,000 in regards to repairs. Mm -hmm. Only $25,500 was spent in Winsburg County. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> with all the disaster that taking place, um, just driving down the street with all the homes that you pass seen needing the repairs, um, the ones that people eventually have to move out of because of the repairs needed, and it's no longer where they can live in the home no, that's extremely low to say that we are right here in Winsburg County, in King Street, behind Georgetown Craft Credit Union. No excuses. So with our particular program, we have a purchase side and we also have repairs. In regards to the repairs, you must own your land and your home. Okay. It's um. <laughs> ways around that as far as with the grant side, I'm going to cover it because in Winsburg County, it's a lot of heirs property. That's another concern. <laughs> with a lot of you know individuals and applying, it's heirs property. Um, so I'm going to also cover that information. But we have a grant side, we have a loan, and then we also have a combination of the loan and the grant. For the entire program with repairs, you must own your land in your home. You must be considered very low income. 
Um, the grant is a max of $7,500. That's once a lifetime. If you receive $7,500 from me today, do not come back next month expecting a grant for $7,500. You've already received it. The only thing you can apply for at that time is a loan, okay? For the grant, is you must be 62 years of age or older. Disability does not apply. That's a lot. That's a question we get a lot. If you're disabled, but you're not 62 or over, you still will not qualify for the grant. Okay? The $7,500 can only be used to remove or replace safety or hazardous issues or to make your home accessible if someone disabled is residing in the home. Now, what I mean by safety or hazardous issues, say, for instance, your roof. You need a new roof. Your ceiling is caving in. You have a soft spot in your floor. Your cabinet's falling down. Anything that's physical that may cause you bodily harm or it may affect your health is actually considered safety or hazardous. And if you're over 62, then you may qualify for the grant. Now, we have an income guideline for the grant because although the program itself is for very low income households, the grant recipient's income must be lower. Sort of like a very, very low, like ones on Social Security where they may only be receiving six, seven hundred dollars a month. You may receive a grant if you're over 62 years of age. Okay? Now, the grant side, um, as far as the home, we repair manufactured homes as well as houses, site built houses. We do not have an age requirement when it comes to the manufactured homes. However, it must be permanently affixed to the property. It can be regular underpinning, it can be brick, as long as it's something showing that it's actually on that particular property. You still, it's home and land. Now with the grant, you must reside in that home for three years after receiving that grant. Okay, you cannot sell it, you cannot deed the home out of your name, you must reside in the property for three years in order to not have to pay that grant amount back. Now also with the grant, um, say um, contractors, we do not grant or loan, we do not provide a list of contractors. You are responsible for finding your own contractor. And it has to be a licensed contractor. Okay? So that's as far as with the grant side of it. Heirs property with the grant. Only with the grant. If you have a deed of distribution showing the heirs listed and the heirs provide just a regular letter, it doesn't even have to be um, notarized or anything, a letter just stating that they consent to you receiving repairs to the home, we can move forward with it. If you for if you resided in the home, you are an heir, but um, it's not a deed of distribution, then you can provide at least five affidavits from your neighbors advising you have resided in that home for 10 years or more. And the taxes must be in your name showing that you're paying those taxes. That's another way around the heirs' property. Only for the grant. Okay? So when it comes to the loan, we can actually do a loan up to $20,000 for repairs. No age requirement. If you're younger than 62, you can apply. The help is here. That's all, the help is here. The loan itself is 1%. It's stretched out over 20 years. That's only five to six dollars per thousand that you receive. That's it, over 20 years. You can pay it off early, you will not be penalized. You can make additional payments, you will not be penalized for that. But it's stretched longer to accommodate the very low income households. So no one can say the help is not here in the county, it's here. When it comes to a combination of the loan and the grant, you must be 62 years of age or older to still receive the grant side of it. But say your repairs total $8,500.
Well, of course, you know the grant max is $7,500. You can actually apply, or if you have that small repayment ability amount, that additional $1,000 can come from the loan side. Well, you can have a combination of the two. Now, if you receive a loan under $7,500, it will be note only. You just sign a promissory note, everything will be handled in our office. If you actually get a loan over $7,500 but less than $15,000, then you will be entitled to us putting a mortgage on the home. It would be more than just you signing a promissory note. However, like I said, where else can you get the assistance <coughs> at such a low amount for the payments? If you receive a loan over $15,000, then you will have to select a closing attorney to close that loan for you. You will have to have a, an appraisal completed on the home to make sure that value is there for us to actually put in those dollar figures into that particular property. We're not going to put in money um, in a home that, that does not have the, um, the value or safe. It's not going to make it where it's in a livable condition where you still have major concerns. Like you have um, a mono, a hole on, the whole, whole house is covered in mold. Your roof falling in, the floor caving in, the front door kicked out. You can't come in on the front porch. That's too much. It is actually beyond actually being livable. Because for the program, you have to live in the home. It has to be your primary residence. Okay? It, you cannot say, oh, well, if this is in my name. Um, my mom lived there, but I actually live in this state. But I want the repairs done because my mom lived there. No. It must be your primary residence. You must reside in that home. And like I said, it's for very low income households only. Now, if you, um, if your income is over and it's actually considered low, then you may possibly be able to apply for the repairs under our purchase program, which at that time, the interest rate will be whatever the going rate is under our purchase program. So, any questions in regards to our 504 repair program? <coughs> I need some questions because Winsburg County it is too many homes that need repairs to say no one have questions. Because I have the application packet here. You can get the application packet. If you request one, just raise your hand and he'll pass them out to you. The application, it seems thick, you all. The entire application is highlighted. The entire application is highlighted for your convenience. If you have questions, call our office. We're more than happy to answer your questions. We prefer that you come to us so you will not talk to someone on the street to get incorrect information. Okay? okay. <coughs> and this is also a fact sheet. More information in regards to the program itself. If you have any questions, I'm going to have them pass these out as well. Ms. Ward, Thank you. I have a question. Yes. And you might have said that, you might have said it in the parallel of But, um, uh, <laughs> um, did you? I think this question is going to benefit all. Because we saw pool, we have a lot of mobile homes. So did you say that? Did you say that that we can apply for repair to mobile homes? Yes. Yes, and the entire county is eligible. It's an eligible area. We have some areas that's not eligible. Even if you live within the city limits of the county, you're still in an eligible area. Okay, now, the other part of my question is, um, I think this question, this information is going to benefit all of us, so. <laughs> um, anyway, the other part of the question is, um, Ms. 
Nelson said that in her program that the mobile home had to, um, the age of it was 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Now, is it an age on yours as well? No, ma'am. As long as you own the land in the home and it's permanently affixed to the property. Even so, if my trailer is 35 years old, mm -hmm. I can apply to get funds to repair that mobile home. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Is everything you say in this application? No. Everything. We have some information on that um, handout and application, but not all information will be able to fit in the application packet. It scares more people away from actually completing it because we have some information. Most of this information sheets is not actual sheets you have to fill out, um, but everything's not listed on there. But if you have any questions that you think of after tonight, you can definitely call our office. We have the phone number for the King Street <coughs> office along with all the rest of the office in the state listed on the front of the application packet. And the income guidelines are also included in the application packet as well as um, a checklist. It's a checklist that's in that packet. If you, com if you plan to complete this application, which I strongly encourage that you do, please look at that checklist. It's listed everything that you must return with your application packet to help the process go smoother and more quicker. If we receive that application packet, information is missing, then we're going to have to send you a letter requesting that information. You only have 15 days from the date of that letter to return that information back to us. Only 15 days, not business days, calendar days from the date of that letter to return the information back to us. If it's not returned back to us, we will have to withdraw the application, but you can reapply. You would just be starting the process all over again. So we strongly recommend you look at that checklist, return all of the items back with that application packet. Okay? I'm about to say, I think there's somebody in the back to pursue this schedule for a while. For me? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, as far as the loan go, I just want to double check and make sure I understood right. Okay. You, you, under the age of 62, mm -hmm. the income has to be the same income that for the other people? If it's very low, and it's according to the number of individuals that's in your home. If you look on the um, income guidelines that's in the packet, it's according to how many individuals in your home, but you can be lower than 62, but the grant is separate from the loan. The grant income must be lower than the actual loan income. The loan income, you will go by very low income on that checklist. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, I want to ask a question. Um, they say my mom, um, her house needs repair. Mm -hmm. She's unable to or power of attorney to anyone specific? Yes. Okay, whoever have that um, power of attorney would have to actually complete all the information because they're going to have to provide us a copy of that power of attorney so we can review and make sure the stipulations are there saying that you can actually act on her behalf. If not, and she can actually act on her own behalf but need assistance, she can still provide us with a consent form advising, I'm going to just say you, for instance, will be assisting her with the application process and that we can provide you with any information and you can contact us in regards to checking on her application status. She can just provide a regular consent form also. Thank you very much. You're welcome. As referring to the loan, the person applies for a loan and that person passed away before the loan is paid off. Then um, the heirs or whoever they actually leave to reside in the home, but then can pay the loan. Continue to pay the loan. Yes, ma'am. Let me hear a question. If someone received a loan under the repair program and they pass away, what would happen at that point? Whomever is going to continue to reside in the home will be responsible for picking up that loan payment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. My question is two questions. Okay. There, sometimes some places, if you're a certain age, like a 92, 93 year old person want to apply for something in USDA, are they still eligible to? Yes. Because in 
some places they say you're too old? No, ma'am. There's no it's such thing as being to too old. Okay. The other thing is, the, um, you know, years ago, when I was in the USDA, credit had to be a certain score. Does that have any purchase? On purchase. We're way more lenient when it comes to the repair of loans. If you're not delinquent on a federal debt and you don't have a lot of just your whole credit report showing collections, we're way more lenient when it comes to repair program because like I say, it's for very low income households. They already have that limited income. So we're not strict when it comes to your credit report when it comes to the 504 repair program. That's a lot of deterrent for teachers. Especially when it's Yes. Yes. But we mainly just confirm they're not delinquent on a federal debt. And if they currently have a mortgage payment, then they cannot be delinquent on a mortgage payment. But anything else, they can um, simply provide us with a letter of explanation. Um, a lot of the elders, they may be medical why they're you know, behind on certain accounts provide us with a letter of explanation advising that, you know, they got behind on the bills due to medical reasons, that they're in the hospital, they had to assist, just whatever the situation is, then we wouldn't just ask them for a letter of explanation. So, in essence, you're still looking at their credit report. If they have to bring a letter of uh, explanation. Yes, if, if they have a lot of collections on it. Yeah. But we're not going to say, well, you need to pay this off in order for us to be able to assist you with repairs, or you need to get this caught up. No, ma'am. We're not that strict when it comes to repairs. No. Over here. People over here, you still have a question? Or was it answered? There was an answer. There was an answer on this side of the room. Oh, okay. Michael, is there We can, um, you can provide an application for the additional repairs that's needed, but we cannot go back and pay for repairs that was already completed by someone else. Yes. Yes, ma'am. You can definitely apply. That's accessibility. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome. Any other questions? Or y'all have information? Questions or information in the back? Any more questions in regards to the repair program? Okay. Well, what, we also have the 502 purchase program. That's for, it can be very low or low income households. You can purchase a manufactured home. It just has to be brand new from a preferred dealer. You can have a home built. You can purchase an existing home that's older. You can purchase a brand new home that was just built under our, care, um, under our purchase program, I'm sorry. Our current interest rate is 3.5%. Where should we get 3.5%? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Under our purchase program right now, our current interest rate is 3.5%. Our mortgages are for 33 years. That's what stretch longer for you to pay. Like I say, very low, low income households. If you're very low, and it all depends on your income, your um, deductions that you have coming out, um, your debt that you're paying out, you may qualify for payment assistance. That's where the government pays a portion of your mortgage every month. You're paying a house payment at a reduced interest rate that could possibly be down to 1% that you're making a house payment on. 1%. Now with that particular program, with the payment assistance now, every year or so, once your loan closes, our customer service center may send you a packet to recertify to make sure your income is actually still low. You're not going to get the loan, you don't get a brand new job, you making $60,000 and expect to still pay a payment at a 1% interest rate. That is not going to happen. Okay? <laughs> so you will have to recertify to make sure your income is still considered low and that you need that assistance. We have to, if you don't need it, 
we have to continue to be able to provide it to others that need the assistance. Um, it's still not a freebie because at the end of the loan, once you've paid off your principal and interest, you will receive a notice of the amount the government has paid on your mortgage throughout the duration of that time frame. If you have done anything to improve the value of your home, if you did not have a concrete driveway, but you added that, you never had a storage building, you added that your home was vinyl, it's now brick. Anything to add value, not upkeep. You cannot say, well, I, I repaired my roof or put in new windows. That's upkeep, okay? Anything that adds value to your home, you can request an appraisal and you could possibly not have to pay that amount back or it can drop drastically. I've had one where the payment assistance was like $60,000. They've done so much improvement to the home, it dropped down to like $5,000. So don't just get in the home and just don't do anything. That helps you too if it add that value. And I mean, like I said, it's 33 years. You can do something to increase the value of your home within 33 years. Any little yearly project, if it's um, just a carpet, you add hardwood floors, that increase your value. You add on, that increase your value. You had a stoop, but you add a front porch. Your value increased. Request that appraisal. You're not going to receive the notice from us in the field, because after your loan closes, it goes to our customer service center out of Missouri. So you have to let them know, I have um, improvements to my home, I want an appraisal. If you don't ask, it's on you. You have to have that responsibility within this loan process also. Okay? Now also with the um, purchase program, if you're a very low income house um, a household, we can extend the years to 38 years to make you be able to get more funds toward a mortgage. For Winsburg County, our loans go up to $175,000. If you, if you have the income, you don't have that much debt, you have that debt to income, you could possibly qualify for $175,000. Yes, the square footage of the home cannot exceed 2,000 heated. You can have a 2,000 heated square feet home and also have a garage. The garage is not heated. 2,000 square foot, $175,000 at a 3.5% interest rate, possibly down to one, depending on if you receive that payment assistance. That's awesome. You're not going to get that at a bank. You're not. Um, we, in regards to credit, <laughs> In regards to credit, we prefer a 640 credit score. However, we're willing to go down to 600. We may be able to go down to 590, depending on what's on your credit. Okay. <laughs> then, um, <laughs> and then, but you cannot be delinquent on the federal debt. We are a federal agency. You cannot have a federal debt that you're not paying, then come back to us for us to give you a house for you to possibly not pay on your house. No, you cannot be delinquent on a federal debt. Student loans classify as a federal debt. A lot of people do not understand that. It is not state, it is federal. Okay? Student loans, if your student loan is in repayment status, if you want an income-based repayment loan and your credit score is 640 or higher, if your payment is zero, that's what we're going to use, zero. If your score is below 640, we're going to have to use 1% of that balance towards your monthly payment. If your score is even over 640 but you're on a deferment, 1% of that balance. Do not, do not, I'm going to say it one more time and I'm going to say it a little louder. Do not apply for our program to purchase a home and go put yourself on an income-based repayment plan and you not approve. <laughs> Who stopped making that monthly payment? I didn't tell you to go do it. I'm not going to pay it. 
So don't call and say, well, you said at the meeting that if it's six forty or higher and it's income based, I, no, 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 no. If you apply, say you deferred and you want to just make sure, if you apply for the program, you're on deferred status, but you apply, you let them know, they say, well, hey, your score is 645, but we have to do 1% because you're on a deferred payment status. Well, say, well, then let me contact them and see how much my payment can be on income based repayment plan. Then if they do it and that payment is lower than that 1%, we can use it. I strongly recommend doing it that way. Because at least you already know. You've already spoke with the specialist. You know it's nothing else that would affect your approval. You know if that may be the only issue, then you can check into that. Do not do it ahead of time and put that extra payment on yourself. If there's any other reason that the specialist tells you that you may not be eligible at this time, listen. Do not give up. Listen. Ask them why. Let them explain it to you. That's so you can work on whatever the issue is and reapply. We strongly recommend reapplying. I spoke with plenty of people. I explained the circumstance. They did what I said. Came back second time. Got a house. For the max. But you have to listen. You have to do what they're recommending to you. You cannot say, oh, okay, then you wait nine months, come back, you didn't work on a thing, and expect to get a house. You have to do your part. We cannot do it for you. You have to do your part in this. It's not like you're going to spend your money, wake up one day and say, hey, I want me a house. But you don't have a job. You don't care about your credit. You don't do nothing, but you want to wake up and decide to apply for a house. It does not work that way. You have to be working at this. We're willing to work with you. And like I said, work with you, not do it for you. We have no control of you making your mortgage pay or your house payments <clears throat> to anything. We have no control over your income, how you work with that. We have no control over that. Okay? SNAP benefits. If you're receiving SNAP benefits, we look at that as a source of repayment income that's helping you. That's a source of income when it comes to repaying a loan. Child support, we, we utilize that as well. We look at different ways to calculate your income to see the best way that actually is correct. We're not going to do anything illegal, but we look at the various calculation methods when it comes to your income to try to assist you everywhere possible. We look for a way to say yes. We don't want to turn you down. But at the same time, it, that's not saying we can do a loan for everybody. You have to qualify. We still have policies and regulations that you have to abide by in order for us to give you this loan. Do you have to have the land for If you approve for whatever amount you can, if you wish to build, you can purchase the land and get your home built for whatever your approval amount is. Right. Um, but you can also purchase uh, pre-existing homes as well. Yes. Okay. Most people don't want to purchase pre-existing homes. Mm -hmm. Whatever you qualify for. Brand new manufactured home from an approved dealer. You cannot purchase one that's already on on a property. Okay. That's used. We do not do it. For the, yes. For the manufactured home part.